Raman Research Institute was set up in 1948 by Sir C. V. Raman as a place where scientists could pursue you know original path breaking research in various areas of physics. So, Raman's science was unique. There is a certain tradition that Professor Raman has set which in a certain way all of us follow because we are trying to look at the fundamental aspects of nature and we want to investigate fundamental science as Raman did. So that is a major part of the activity of the Raman Research Institute. We also have applied research here but our strength in fundamental research is actually something that carries on from the time of Raman. In the past few decades we have witnessed the quantum frontier come very close to our day to day life. Raman Research Institute prides itself in hosting best researchers of the country in this emerging frontier. The first quantum revolution has already been the discovery of quantum mechanics and a whole bunch of technologies which it has led to. The second quantum revolution is a bit more subtle. It is basically asks what can you do with a single quantum system where you have tremendous control over what how that system actually works. The two key areas of applications that we are working on are called quantum computing and quantum communications or secure quantum communications. These are the two I would say bedrocks for quantum science and technologies. My work is based on quantum teleportation protocol and unlike science fiction we do not actually teleport matter. So in this protocol we teleport a state of the photon that is the polarization of photon. In our lab we work with photons which are the particles of light or the, we say quantum of light. Now with photons we get to test many uh, fundamental aspects of quantum mechanics. If we see in lasers or normal light, the number of particles pertains to millions in a very short time interval. So what we do is we perform various uh, processes and then take this uh, photon number from millions to a few hundreds and then we do quantum experiments on these photons. Since we go to a quantum level and then uh, we explore the fundamental laws of physics, these protocols based on these fundamental laws are very secure. I am sure you are at least doing something of the following four activities, buying something with a credit card, doing online banking, maybe participating in elections every now and then, okay. And maybe the fourth one which is the defense sector that only some of you may belong to. So what is it that binds all these things together? It is something that others should not know, where you have some message, you encrypt it with a key, the receiver receives it, has the same key and can decrypt it. So this is where quantum communication comes in. We use laws of quantum mechanics to make things secure and that is called quantum key distribution. But it is actually useful when governments can talk to each other no? because that is where the secrecy will be of paramount importance. And one of the ways in which this can be done is by using a satellite as a trusted node. So one of our notable ones is uh, you know, a collaboration with ISRO on uh, satellite based quantum communications. Suppose I want to use QKD, so can I have quantum security in the cell phone? And that is something which we are working towards using integrated photonics based approach to QKD. And uh, this is what I say, QKD for the common man. So uh, one of our major experiments is laser produced plasmas. A plasma is the fourth state of matter. And that is what we have in the stars. Therefore, if you can create a plasma in the laboratory and study it, then basically we are studying a star. So there are various techniques, experimental techniques by which we can study the little star that we made in our laboratory. Another aspect of our study is nonlinear optics where we can use materials which show some specific behavior. For example, one of the interesting studies that we did some time back was to make an optical diode that should allow light to pass through in one direction 
but it should not allow light to pass through in the other direction. So one of the things that we devised was a tandem structure. That is, you take two materials. So one of these materials is called a saturable absorber. The other material is called a reverse saturable absorber. So if you keep them in one direction, like let's say saturable absorber here, reverse saturable absorber here, and then you send light from one direction, it transmits in a certain way. And if you send light from this direction, it transmits in another way. So this way, we could actually make an optical diode. So this was one of our interesting results. In our 12th standard and 11th standard, we, we would have heard terms like quantum state, principal quantum number, etc. In, in the labs, we, used to, we get to realize these things via suitable experiments. Looking at a single quantum object is a very delicate process how to cool atoms to a temperature where an atom which in this room would travel at, at our temperatures would travel at few hundred meters per second will now travel at centimeters per second. And when the atoms are cooled to micro Kelvin and even to nano Kelvin temperatures, the classical nature of the atom disappear and then the quantum properties of the atom dominates. We employ cold sodium and potassium atoms for our experiment. So after the atoms are cooled, they are trapped. Now the question is how do you observe them? The photons that come out of the atomic cloud, they are captured in a camera by focusing through a lens. The optical traps we can also structure using the MEMS based devices. The full form of MEMS is micro electromechanical system which is a array of mirrors. And in such an arbitrary shape when quantum objects are trapped then various exotic quantum phases become uh, evident. In November 2015 we for the first time got the Rydberg excitation in cold atoms, which is the first time it was demonstrated in India. Rydberg atoms are basically the atoms whose outside single electron is excited to very high principal non quantum state. And it's an important milestone for Indian science, which opens up research on quantum computation with cold Rydberg atoms. And for getting a cold atom, we really need uh, lasers which are extremely stable both in terms of intensity and frequency. India has a very, very nascent laser industry. Most of it is imported stuff which is assembled together, etc. And the lasers that we have built, uh, which are home built, uh, are for a very, very low line weight, basically very, very precise laser. So one is that and the other is for the experiment that we have to do. So we, we do not have to buy the lasers. And also because, you know, the laser uh, procurement time is huge and also costly. And these are going to be required as this quantum revolution gains momentum. In RRI, I had collaborations with also theorists on the measurement of response function of cold atoms. That's really a very exciting to be able to interface with experimentalists. As a theorist, that's very satisfying. In India, we are engaged in a very strong collaborative effort with Ayuka and IIT Tirupati and we are making a very precise instrument which is a single ion trap. The effort has been led by the people at RRI, particularly the students and postdocs. So one of our notable ones is the Geneva Science and Diplomacy Anticipator or JESDA. We are trying to come up with what is called the Open Quantum Institute which will facilitate collaborative research in quantum science and technology across the globe and Raman Research Institute is the first institute from India to actually be an institutional partner. When the students, they would have worked for a very long durations or in the labs and when they get their first uh, papers published, this one, that is, that is a very big achievement I can say. The best part of being researcher is the ability to ask and debate with your guide and fellow colleagues without any judgment and then get a feedback and act upon it. All these supports like uh, administrative support, then mechanical engineering services, 
electronics engineering, electrical engineering. So we have dedicated sections for all these facilities in the institute and they have been extremely helpful for us.